live button. I always want to like make sure we're actually live on the page because there's always a little bit of a delay, a little bit of a delay. So, oh, what's this? Got it. Okay. Uh, make sure we're actually live in the group. I don't see us there yet. All right, let's try that again. Come on, come on. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. What? Yeah, testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay, there we go. There we go. We're live, and I'm going to hit the record button. Okay, so we're really live. We're really live here. Uh, you know, and we are here today with Matt, known as, in the industry, Matt the Mortgage Guy. Matt the Mortgage Guy. Um, and we're going to talk about his story. Uh, has gotten a really, really, some really great results from his YouTube channel. So, you know, I wanted to have him in here. A lot of folks have been asking about for content around, you know, people that are killing it on the newer platforms. Well, I don't know if YouTube counts as a newer platform. YouTube has been around for like 20 years at this point. But anyway, I digress. Uh, you know, uh, people that are killing it on alternative platforms that aren't just pay-per-click, aren't just ads, right? So content. That is a little bit of a tougher nut to crack, a little bit, right? So we're going to talk about to Matt about how did you crack this nut, which is YouTube. Uh, we've had other great YouTube personalities here in the group, uh, Brandon Morenin, other coaches that have just really killed it on YouTube. Uh, but, but Matt's a little bit different, right? He's not in the kind of real estate. He's not coaching real estate agents on his channel. He's talking to consumers on his channel, right? Talking to the end user, the end client. So Matt, welcome uh, uh, to the show. Welcome here inside the group. I appreciate you giving us some time and tell us a little bit about your background, right? How'd you get into the industry, right? How'd you get into mortgage? And more importantly, how did you get into YouTube? How did that become like a, like a big thing for you? Right. Yeah. Happy to share my story. And first and foremost, thanks for having me. Um, hopefully today I can share some, some nuggets, some insights, some shortcuts. I haven't done everything right, but you know, something seems to be working because, you know, for agents or lenders or really anybody um, who's trying to reach the end consumer online? In you know, in this case, we're talking YouTube. It is an absolute goldmine. So, like you said, you know, it's different than pay per click, but worth it, right? You you, you got to think about your personal brand and your business and having some control because pay per click type stuff. When you stop paying, they stop clicking, right? It's Done. it's game over, right? And something like like YouTube, you know, or a social presence on any other platform is an asset that I own. And it's mine, 100%. right? And 100%. so um, I'll, I'll, I'll start with my story, then I'll tell a little bit more about you know all the all the great things that have come of it, right? So about a decade ago, late 2013, I got licensed. Uh, February 1st, 2014, I think I uh, funded my first mortgage loan, and really, almost from the very beginning, I started doing content. And really. The, the YouTube story is an interesting one because it started not with all the things that the benefits I have today of consumers coming to me and reaching out and me being able to build rapport and, and have clients all over the country want to work with me and my team. But it really started out because I was trying to get better. I was trying to educate myself. And interesting. I would get the same questions about like, what's an escrow account? How do points work? And after answering it 17 times, whether it was a real estate agent or any consumer and having a five to seven minute conversation, I thought to myself, what if I recorded this? And then every time someone asked this question, because as my mortgage business grows, I know I'm going to get these questions over and over again. And so I tried that on a couple of different topics that I was getting questions on. And I realized, you know what? When I spend the 10, 15, 20 minutes to study it so that if I make a video, I don't sound like a complete idiot, which by the way, <laughs> my early videos, I did sound like a complete idiot, Of course. but it made me a little bit better because I was preparing to put it on a video, right? So I got sharper. And so for me, it was my university, you know, it was a training ground for me. And I, I can promise you, I didn't have any intention of capturing clients or any of that through YouTube. And I've got proof. I had the worst titles imaginable. I had no thumbnails. My, my, my video was very subpar. I think the beginning like was my MacBook uh, camera that was, that was part of the, that. And then I got one that attached to that. Then I recorded for three or four years on my iPhone. 
Um, and not even the latest and greatest iPhones of today, you know, the iPhone three and four or whatever it was when I was doing that. And, and, you know, 2019 or 20 is when I really got focused on bettering the content, bettering the video quality, bettering the audio. And the cool part is I got the advice from an agent. And and, and let me, let's see, let's wind it back. So how long did it take? Cause I think I see a lot of folks who want to go to content for some reason. That's the first thing they do. They feel they have to get the professional camera and the and this audio set up and the lighting and they buy the camera off of and the, the the lamp off of Amazon and I go hold on hold on hold on so Matt tell us again how long did you were you making videos before you got the pro because your setup looks amazing by the way I, that, Thank that's you. a great <laughs> sharp image great lighting you have, have, have the, the, the sign in the background how long did it take you were doing content before you got the pro setup eight short years. It's, and that's, you know, and, and, and I love that because that's been consistent with everyone that's killing with these platforms. They didn't start with this professional setup, that that came later, right? Yeah. Uh, you focused on kind of honing in the message, honing in the content first for years, right? For years. And you started by scratching your own itch. I love that too, right? This was collateral right, to, for, for your clients, your own clientele. You were solving a problem for yourself. And then, you know, and, and I love to hear how, to, how it went from, collateral and useful for you to you know lead generation and just exposure what what was there a tipping point kind of tell us about that story because i'm sure there's something around that when did it start becoming a lead generation activity versus like a self-education activity because i love that too you ever want to master something teach it to somebody else right you want to really understand what something is put the pressure on yourself to teach it to someone else and man you're going to take it very differently yeah you know it was 2020 there's a guy in my local market who's a real estate agent who was new and he had he had me on his channel on on a live and in return for being on his channel and, and you know sharing my my mortgage knowledge he said Matt do you mind if i give you like a channel review and i said of course not and he basically showed me everything i was doing wrong which was almost everything <laughs> Right. Like, so, wow. You know, thumbnails are not as important today as they were in 2021 and 22. Um, but I had no thumbnails at all. And so like my video would come up, it would be a random screenshot, not very clickable. So click through rate, which is something YouTube tracks was terrible. Um, my titles, you know, somebody searching on Google, Google owns YouTube, or they're searching within YouTube, they wouldn't find my videos. Because my videos were Mortgage Mondays episode three dash something like the the if I was trying to hide my videos from the public, I was doing a really good job. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. gave me all that advice. And so really around 2020 is when I said, you know what? I'd love to do business with some of these people I see in the comments that are like, great video. This really helps exactly what I needed. Thank you so much. Um, do you do loans in Tennessee? Do you do loans in Texas? Do you look, do loans in Florida? And so in 2020, thumbnails got put on videos. I started putting titles so that people could actually find and, the videos. And, and out of curiosity, this, this agent you talked to, you said they were newer in the business. How did they figure this out? Was it, were they just a consumer of the content and they kind of like figured it out on their own? Or were they like a YouTube personality before getting into real estate? I'm really curious about that. You know, I think, you know, great masterminds like yours and others where people are just sharing best practices. This got agent it. got around enough people and said, Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? And took a little bit from everybody, but a cool story I'd love to share. Um, if if there's agents thinking about it, I don't want my long journey to discourage somebody and say, hey, I'm not going to do it. I've got an agent in my market, Northern California, who only works with people that come from his YouTube channel. I'll say it slow. He will not work with anybody who reaches out to him who he hasn't nurtured via YouTube. Like that's just his rule. Did over 20 million in production last year, a hundred percent from YouTube. And he's been only doing it a few years, Got it. but Got it. he's learned. And this is the beauty of long form. In my opinion, you can do it on Instagram. You can do it on TikTok. If somebody is your vibe, your tribe, and they want to work with you, all you have to do is show up on camera and be yourself. And then if 500 people watch it and 17 of them think that you're the type of person they'd want to work with, they'll raise their hand. They'll leave a 
they'll fill out a form. And so um, I started, you know, doing the best practices that I'd learned from other people who were doing it better. And with that came thumbnails, with that came better titles, with that came a call to action, which I honestly, I don't know if my old videos have, you know, call me on my cell phone or whatever it was, right? Like I, go to greatmortgagebroker.com. Me and my team are happy to help. Like I've said that 9 million times now. So, so I've got it down pretty good. Um, and for me, the coolest part about it, I think if you're an agent or you're a lender or you're anybody, if you go into a room and you present, and let's say that you do a first time home buyers class as an agent, there's 20 first time home buyers in the class, three or four of them or whatever the percentage is, is going to say, yeah, Shelly sounds like a nice lady. I want to do business with her. Oh, Mark, he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. I'll work with him. Online, you get to do that at scale. Yeah. And you get to talk to thousands of people. And so the people that reach out to me, they know who I am. They know how I talk. They know, you know, how I think to a certain extent. And so the rapport is already built. They, they feel they know you, right? They, 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 there's a personality there. They, they realize that they jive with it, do they not? I have a much smaller YouTube channel than yours, Matt. And I get that effect. I get people go, coming to me saying, hey, I, I've watched Gus's content. And yeah, I, lo I love what your company does. I love what you guys do. I love the, I, I want to work with you guys. And I'm like, you know, and, you know, talking about like way, way smaller. And that effect happens. That effect is real, right? So 100%, it is, it is almost, um, you know, I, I don't know how to describe it, but the people feel they know you already, right? There's already the the ice has been broken, or the rapport has been built. They just literally say, "I'm ready to work with you." Like people right. that are coming from the content channel, right? So I, I, you know, if that's something you can crack, I think it's doable. Matt, if you were starting again, let, let, let's make it real for people. Starting again, over, right? You you were doing something else for the last decade. You want to get into, for some reason, I don't know why, but you want to get into mortgage right now. <laughs> I want to talk about that too. I want to talk about that too. Uh, you know, but you want to get into mortgage. You're like 7%. Yay. You're getting into mortgage right now. What would, what, if anything, would you do differently? And I'm sure that list is long. Would you differently? You've already mentioned a few things. You'd focus on, you know, the, the, the SEO, the, the titles, the, the keywords, you'd make it a little bit more attractive visually. What else would be different for you? Because it's a different environment now than it was in 2013. What 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 are the what are some of those big differences? What would you recommend to someone? Same question, right? Why would you to someone starting off right now if you, if you were that person? Yeah, I mean, if if you're starting off, and this goes for YouTube and anything, the easiest way to create content that you know people will engage with is look at what people are already engaging with, right? Right, and and and. You know, I get enough questions, but maybe you're a brand new agent or you just don't have enough interaction to really see what the popular topics are. Go into groups, go into settings where there's a lot of people and you find out they're talking about it's really hard to, you know, figure out this affordability thing with rates high and prices high, you know. So you speak on that. And the more you do it, the better you get. So really, the best advice is like, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start if you want to be great. And the proof is there with my channel. If you go and you sort by oldest, my early videos were not good. And that's okay, right? Because the, the good news for most people when they're starting is your videos won't be that good, but I'll give you some, another piece of good news. Nobody's going to watch them either right? So your first video is not going to get 50,000 views. So get out there and start and make the videos. And like anything else, it's a trial and error thing. I still have videos that flop. You know, I've got 20,000 subscribers and 100,000 views a month. And I thought that wire fraud was an important thing to talk about. Apparently, <laughs> nobody cares, right? My client $1,000 by wiring it to the wrong person a couple of weeks ago, it was a big deal. My heart sank. Luckily, they got it back. But yeah. I made a YouTube video on it. People, people weren't searching that. They didn't want to see that, right? And and I I you know make a a, a short diss and Dave Ramsey. Everybody loves it, right? So you 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 have to <laughs> test, right? And and that's that's the thing about social media: Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, all of it. Some stuff's going to do well. Some stuff's not. The best way to find out is to do it all. And, and I think that that, like, if, if I were to answer your question about what would I do different, I think today, 
uh, a lot of people really like and want short form. And so I did next to no shorts on YouTube as recent as six to 12 months ago. And now they're sprinkled in because that's what people want. I've got YouTube live um, that I'm leaning back into because home buyers are confused and they're scared and they don't know. And so, you know, if anybody uh, watching this subscribes to my channel, jump on Mondays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm going to spend an hour every single money. I'm sorry, uh, Monday, money. <laughs> Thinking about money. Uh, <laughs> answering home buyers questions, right? And I, I, I sat on there for an hour last week. I forgot how much I loved it. And wow. I can't even think of these questions if I tried. But by just opening it up, people are asking questions like, that's a really good question, right? And then when I answer it, everybody gets to benefit from it. So, you know, at the end of live, like live action, people in the chat, like a, like a, like a Twitch streamer, like a gamer, like you're in there interacting with the audience then. Cause that's, cause that's the thing about today's internet and social media today. There's so much that if people search something and they're like, you know, they search their market, you know, how do I get my offer accepted on, on my first home? They're going to get so much information that it's overwhelming where if you're live, it's not information from nine months ago. It's not information that maybe from somebody who, you know, wrote it through chat GPT. It's you, you're a real person. You're answering it today. Um, and so there, there's value in that. And I think that if, if you think about it and people will use the phrase, you know, add value loosely, but that's what you want to do. You want to show up and you want to add value by making what is complicated to a lot of people because people in real estate and mortgage both they forget the average firefighter or nurse or engineer they don't know the intricacies of real estate and mortgage so that's the other piece of good news for real estate agents you don't have to talk about the most complicated stuff talk about the simple stuff absolutely how a transaction works what does it mean home inspection what does it mean that i've got to get an appraisal done the the things that are simple to the everyday agent are things that, that buyers just don't know. And by putting the information out there in a simple and digestible way, you're educating and you're helping people and you're also helping brand yourself and grow your own business. Yeah, I, I love that, Matt, a hundred percent true. And you know, I think, you know, we're, we're lucky or fortunate to be in an industry that people love talking about, right? I mean, you know, if, if, if we're plumbers, you know, a little bit of a smaller niche, right? Literally, not everyone's going to want to talk about plumbing all day or long, you know, clogged drains. We're talking about buying and selling homes, right? Buying and selling homes. And, you know, uh, you know, for better or worse, America is a home owning kind of country, right? Not every country is like that. Not every country is not the same. Like you, the U.S. is pretty unique in its expectation and feelings about home ownership, right? So it's like, hey, like take advantage of that. That that I mean, that's the one topic that everyone wants to talk about because they own a home, they'd like to own a home, they'd like to own a bigger home, they like to own a smaller home. But for all these things, they think interest rates are too high. They think they're well, no one ever thinks they're too low. They think they're too high. Are they going higher? Or you know, what what are my options? Right, all all these things. And I want to segue into an interesting topic, right? Because you know, the last twelve months uh, have have definitely been a trip in the whole mortgage space, right? So a lot of mortgage brokers have really, agents too, but especially the mortgage brokers have really struggled the last 12 months, Matt. So, I mean, tell us how you've navigated this really, you know, uh, chaotic, uh, you know, high rate situation. We almost forgot rates, rates could go up as well, right? Like, you know, it was crazy. I bought my first property, a uh, condo in 06, end of 06, for six and a quarter percent. And I thought it was the best deal ever in my life. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Because so, also, I, you know, I, I came from another country to the US and, you know, in my home country, interest rates were like 18%. So, you know, there's that too. But even in the US, I thought that was a great deal. Like in America, six and a quarter percent. Oh my goodness, this is the best deal ever. So we went from that to we're back to that, higher than that. People are really, you know, nervous about these things. And the market has really changed from 12 months ago. Well, how's that shift? How is it? How did you manage it? How has it affected you? Has it even affected you? What have you seen? And how have you adapted 
to a different market than we saw in those post pandemic years. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, 2020 and 21 real estate and mortgage, both, you know, 7 million plus transactions on the real estate side. And, you know, mortgages were falling out of the sky. Everybody wanted to refinance. A hundred percent. I'm sure I'm the, the refi market must have been higher than the, than the, you know, the, the, the sale market at some point, right? Because it was just, it was just nuts, right? It was, it was a, it was a wild and great time. And, you know, I see a bunch of folks struggling and to pretend like it didn't affect my business would, would not be genuine. Right. So, um, it it's, it's been a real thing, but the thing that's kept me going is the mission is still the same. The mission is still educate people, you know, create life-changing opportunities through home ownership. And so my message is the same. Do I have to work three times as hard to get 60% of the business I got in 2021? Yeah, that's still true. But, you know, with, with the mission still being the same and, you know, we can talk about a transition I made in 21 to where now I'm nationwide, you know, that was born from the YouTube stuff where I just had people saying, I'm buying in Memphis. Can you help me? I'm buying in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Can you help me? And after a while of doing my best to keep up with just getting those people connected with someone who I knew could help them, I said, oh, and I just expand. And so now, you know, I'm in 48 states. Go to greatmortgagebroker.com. Me and my team will help you out. Um, but um, so, so you were you were doing that in the beginning. Holy cow! So you were just focused on California, or our, our, our states around California? Yeah, and I mean, and I grew a humongous business in California. I mean, just in California in 2021, I did 110 million in mortgage production, which you know, wow. for on the mortgage side, the 100 million dollar mountains, like the, the the holy grail for mortgage brokers, yeah. is 100 yeah. million in a year, and end of 2021, uh, became a founding partner of, of U Mortgage. We're nationwide, we're in 48 states. And it was a good fit for me because I wanted to serve all these people that I met over you, this. You were, you were getting the, the lead flow. People, right, people yeah. You. That's the thing about YouTube. There's no California YouTube, right? There's no like, you know, <laughs> only show my content to people that are like around Northern California. It doesn't exist. It's everyone. Right. It's everyone, right. right? Yeah. And, you know, before I forget to give this piece of advice, because I know a lot of people, part of your mastermind, are real estate agents. And yes, I get it. You're local. Depending on where you're at, you might have an ability to refer out. I can tell you that that agent who gave me the training, and I might as well shout him out, Mark McDonough. Um, you know, if you type in Sacramento real estate in YouTube, Mark McDonough is going to come up. And I don't know if he's going to be mad at me for giving away some of his secrets. <laughs> but if you're in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, or you're in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, say that specific city 70 to 80 times in every video you make. Then the YouTube algorithm, like it's smart. It is going to push your content. It, it can't localize it to where only Dallas Fort Worth sees your content, but it, it will show up in all the searches, right? Exactly. And so someone searches that term Sacramento real estate, they're going to find Mark McDonough. He's going to be at the top. And so as a real estate agent, you can still find a way to make it rather local and moving to Sacramento, best places in Sacramento, this in Sacramento, you just, all of your content is direct around your specific locale. Love it. People search it on, on Google or YouTube and they, and they find you. So, um, you know, I don't know if I answer your question about how I handled the, um, you know, the transition, but part of it was that it was expanding from just California to go in nationwide. Um, Massive. and really, you know, if, if you're an agent in this market or you're a lender in this market, you got to think to yourself now more than ever, people need the education now more than ever. They're looking Absolutely. for good advice. And Absolutely. so if you didn't do it before, step up to the plate now and you say you're an, you know, an advocate for homeowners and for home ownership and for your local community, step up and do it right. Be become the, the, the expert. And that's the thing about video. It's beautiful. It, 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 it establishes you as the expert. And I really think that after you do it time and time again, you just continue to get sharper and sharper where, you know, somebody's asking me last night at a real estate meetup, I don't do a ton of presenting in person, but they were like, man, where did you get the skills to present like that? I said, honestly, it's usually me by myself, me and my camera. Right? <laughs> and so it's I guess audience I audience of one audience of right, one. Right? Right. Usually. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that that's the thing. If you, if you go out and you make a bunch of videos 
on on your specific niche or or what you're trying to do the 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 worst you can do is get better the worst you can do is 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 hone your skills a little bit get more educated for me in in mortgage too it was really neat every time i learned something new i go that's cool i didn't realize you could have more than one fha loan cuz they've got an exception i'm going to make a video on it but before i do let me study for 20 minutes all right what are what are the exceptions for having more than one fha loan and i made a video and I got better, right? So, so I'm better at my job. I've got people who are reaching out to me who have that same question. There's, there's so many benefits. It's really, really cool. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that story because I absolutely, I think you're absolutely correct. Uh, you, you get better at it with, with practice. I remember for the, for the longest time, I did not want to put my face out there for my business, right? For, for what we do. Did not want to, didn't want to make a personal brand for, for a lot of limiting beliefs around it, right? Didn't want to have a personal brand and put my face out there. The pandemic changed everything, right? Pandemic was like, you know what? I'm either going to go out there, like trying to, I'm going to go down fighting, or I'm going to, I'm not going to leave anything, you know, in the toolbox. I got to use everything, right? So I went all in. For me, my platform was Facebook. I was native to that platform. I felt comfortable there. So I started a Facebook group. This Facebook group, uh, February of 2020, as like a little side gig from, from a coaching mastermind I was in. And now we've grown it to 5,300 people. And, you know, it's it's the engine of my business, right? So, and, and all my content is, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to expand to other, other social media networks, but but my, my bread and butter um, is Facebook. You look back at those early videos, it is rough, man. It, you know, it is not, you know, yeah, every, every mistake you can make, um, you know, every, uh, you know, not great titles, not great content, to, to where I am now, it's night and day. And I've gotten very comfortable talking in front of my laptop here, like I'm doing right now. Like this, is right. Like, this is easy for me now. This is much, yeah. much simpler. Because at the beginning, I had to like write a script out. I would write, I would write like a like a page of what am I going to say? How am I going to say it? Now it's like, I, like you said, I've got a good idea. I have an insight. Boom, I'm busting out the phone. I'm busting out my, my, my computer. Let's talk to the audience about it because I want, I want to share these things with them. And it, but, it, but it doesn't start that way, right? You have to kind of get comfortable with the, with the process, with how to set it up, the flow of a good video, how to do it the right way. But once you get past that, that can take a few videos. It can take a few months. It can take a little bit of time. Once you get past that, you realize there's a never-ending list of things you can talk about. It just, it just doesn't end. It just doesn't end because that's the industry. Every transaction is an adventure, right? Every <laughs> transaction tends to teach you something about the process, about the, the, the documents, about the regulations, about yourself, about the client, about the property, you know, about, you know, all, all these different things. Right. And that is the, that you don't need more content than that. You really, yeah. you, you just don't. Right. And if you're a real estate agent, it is about, the specific property you saw that you liked, the neighborhood you saw that you liked, the 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 school district you discovered that's amazing. I mean, all these, and it just it just it just never stops. But early on, you can struggle to find topics because you don't have that muscle flexed. You don't have that like like the the doing is hard enough. So once you get the, past the doing part, the doing becomes very easy. You realize you can talk about anything, right? Like that that's I think that's you have to get to that point. You have to get there. I, I know it sounds weird for people listening. You don't get it. I didn't get it either until you get into that flow and you just kind of realize now I have a list. Like I have pages and pages of content ideas. I haven't even gotten to yet, right. To expand on to talk about because you kind of just realize that they're everywhere. And like you said, Matt, it's the simplicity, right? It's the simplest things can be very interesting to the audience. The simplest things to you and I are just, are just not that complicated for us, but they're like very insightful, very interesting uh, to the audience, right? So you, you think about it from the audience's perspective, and they absolutely want to know about that. That's interesting to, to them. It's interesting to them. That's awesome. Yeah. That's no, great. I got I got I got two things I want to pull out of there because I think it'll help people. Yeah. One, you talked about Facebook being something you were comfortable with, and and something that 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 was you know that was your spot. That yeah. that it and. I was native. It's, it's, it's a platform I understood. I understood people, the kind of content that was on there. I, I understood it was good there. I, I was native to it much more than anything else. And, and, the, and here's the thing for people, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. I could name people that have had success in all of those, right? <laughs> yeah. So if you don't know which one you should start on, or you're overwhelmed because somebody told you, you got to be all in on everything, right? Pick the one that feels comfortable to you and lean into it. 
right? Because there are TikTokers I know that 100% of their business comes from TikTok. I know some people on Instagram that, you know, had to build funnels. They were getting so many DMs through Instagram. So whatever feels comfortable for you, lean into that. And to your point about being new and thinking about like, what the heck am I going to talk about? I think it's important. I'm still a consumer of content, right? And so I'm looking at stuff and as a consumer of it, you say engaging. Yes. I had to stop and listen to that for four minutes. That was cool. So maybe that's something that other people will think is cool too. And it got 94,000 views. So there's social proof. That is something people are interested in, right? And you'll come across things where then you just put your own spin on it. And you're like, you know what? Man, like that was cool. That was engaging. I'm going to talk about a similar experience I had where we had inspections go wrong with a client or we did something on a transaction that we shouldn't have done or thank God we did. Whatever the case may be, there's going to be real life examples. There's going to be stuff that you're able to resonate with on other people's content. And so really like there's no excuse for not knowing what to do or where to start. It's just a matter of another thing that I really get because I talk to a lot of people that are like, I want to get started and I want to do this. The first step's always the hardest, no matter what it is, 100%. right? You wake up on uh, January 1st, you're like, this is the year I'm going to get in shape, right? The first trip to the gym is the hardest. The second one's a little bit easier. By the time you've been going for three or four weeks, you're just like, all right, that's what I do. I do that for 45 minutes before work every day. And so, you know, content creation, recording videos, anything that's uncomfortable or different is the same in that it's the hardest to start. Once you get started, you get some momentum. And, and that's where I would encourage people, set a goal and just tell yourself, I promise myself I'm going to make 10 videos. I'm going to make, you know, 10 pieces of content on Instagram or on Facebook or on YouTube, and then see how it feels. I think what you're going to learn is video number seven is better than video number one. Mm -hmm. And by video number 10, you're like, well, I did pretty dang good. Like that, that, that was pretty smooth. Right. And wow. so by the time you get the ball rolling um, and get over kind of the fear of maybe I look funny, maybe I sound funny, you know, People talked about my nose on Facebook. They talked about my funny looking thumbnails. Um, it, it doesn't affect me, but I, I, I empathize with those where like that stuff would affect you. That, that's, that's life, right? And 100%. I look like this if I meet you in person. And so, you know, I'm, I'm not Brad Pitt, sorry, but- This, this is what you get. <laughs> this is what you get. get. Yeah, 100%. And you know, Matt, I don't know if you found this to be true, but I kind of feel that uh, people, you know, I don't know if it's educational content around like business related content, but people kind of want that authenticity. I, 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 don't, I don't think that's a, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think people want to kind of want to talk to someone who looks real. They don't, if they saw Brad Pitt selling them on mortgage, I don't think they'd be as convinced as, you know, Matt selling them on mortgage, like a local guy, someone that knows what they're talking about. I, I, you know, the, I, I think that people crave that authenticity. I think people kind of want, I think, we'll, I think it resonates with folks, right? So for me, some of my best performing shorts, are kind of these kind of grainy, not high def Zoom. My, my thing is is long form. That's kind of my jam. That's my. I love to talk to you about that transition to shorts. I've recently made it only in the last sixty days, and it is, oh my god, like it's probably tripled my 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 reach and my views. Tripled in the, within sixty days on YouTube and and Facebook, and it's been like like a trip. But I'm not great at short form. Like that's not like it's, I'm not native to those platforms. Like you know whether it was Vine a few years ago or TikTok now. I'm just that's just not really my thing. So I've I've taken my long form content, which I'm very comfortable with, and using tools and a team to help me kind of chop it up and turn them into shorts because I'm not great at making TikTok. I'm just not that, not that good at it, right? <laughs> uh, I have less practice with it. I've, I've consumed less. I, I don't want to say I'm not good. I've consumed less content and, and, I, and I've done it less. I'll, I'll say it that. I'm kind of a novice when it comes to it. You, you, you nailed it. You nailed it. You said, I haven't done it as much. Yeah. And you know what's funny? Exactly the same for me. I love long form. I really like to spend an eight minute video to explain to somebody just like they were a consumer sitting across the desk from me. And I say, you know what? Escrow accounts, I get it, man. They're kind of confusing. Let me break it down really simply for you, right? Just like I would. I've now had that conversation. I'm, I've got my uh, my page pulled up and I was curious on how many videos had more than 20,000 views. Boring subjects, like what are escrows? 
or how do escrow accounts work? I think it's got 50,000 views or something. And it continues. Yeah. It's like an evergreen video that continues to get views. Um, and so like you, I don't think I'm great at short form. I haven't done as much <laughs> short form, but we'll give the people what they want, right? 100%. And the demographic 100%. that's going to be buying houses in the next decade, they got a shorter attention span. You know, they, sorry. They, they, they the, like what, that content. And, and I've seen, you know, I don't know if you've seen this with your content, but I've seen that the short form, uh, I mean, it, it kind of rises all, all boats. I mean, the, the short form obviously is, is the front end, but my longer form videos get more views now, right? Than they were just on their own, just, just from the algorithm. The shorts kind of bring people in. They, 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 they get people's attention. And again, ultimately, I don't, I don't have as big an audience as you, but I want people that are engaged with the content. I, I'm not crazy for like a million views, because I'm, 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 my target are professionals, right? Like mortgage uh, uh, loan officers, uh, real estate. So I naturally have a much smaller audience than everyone that can buy, possibly buy a home in America. I want engaged people, people that want to see my long form content. That's like, it's like a funnel, but you know, in a way. Yeah. I, think, I see short forms in that way. Short form is the, the new entrance to the funnel. Long form is for the more serious people. And then they reach out, join my Facebook group, et cetera, right? So I I, I like it from, from that aspect to it. And so so for me, it's been kind of a little bit of a trip, but I want to ask you, I could not get away without asking this question. So Matt, tell, let's get into a little bit of the nitty gritty. What does your process look nowadays uh, for, for your content creation? Because you're killing it with the long form videos. You're doing a lot of shorts as well. Like, I, and I mean, and you also work on mortgage too. I'm getting you're not a full-time <laughs> yeah. content creator. You're not Mr. Beast here. So what, what is, how do you manage to consistently crank out the content multi-platform, not just YouTube um, and, and sorry, multi-form, not just long form. How do you manage to do that and kind of do your job at the same time and not go crazy in, in the attempt? Right. Yeah. And I think talking about it, I'll, I'll probably get exhausted just talking about it because I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it to people that, that want to get started. Like it's not easy and there's no one click and seven platforms get a video of you, you know, that's AI generated. <laughs> it's, 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 it's going to take some work, but you know, luckily as you do more and more and, and most people grow their business, they get more help. Right. And so in the beginning it was me and, and my uh, MacBook. You were Pro. making the thumbnails. You were at putting the, editing the video. Or, or just were... not even knowing that a thumbnail oh, true. was a thing. Right. That's true. And that's so true. you're recording on my MacBook. And I think it was uh iMovie where I had a little intro and then I had something in between and, you know, it would take me two hours. And so I was doing one video a week, mortgage Mondays. And I, and I did all that, but nowadays the, 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 the cool thing is like you do you can take long form and you can cut it up. And then a little segment where you have a 15 minute, 15 second sound bite can become a short form. And what I've been doing recently, because I know how much, you know, engagement short form gets and how people want it is I'll record a TikTok. And like you, I'm just getting started and figuring out, you know, my, my, my rhythm and how to get into the habit of doing those. I can repurpose that as an Instagram, you know, real, real. I can, right. I can, I can repurpose it as a YouTube short. And I was telling somebody the other day, it was really cool for me before the Dave Ramsey um, one that got like 5,000 views the first couple of days uh, went on YouTube. I already knew it would do well because it did well on TikTok, right? The, the market had already spoke. We like this. This is funny. <laughs> Talking smack about Dave Ramsey and how his principles don't apply to California real estate. Um, and so um, nowadays, I'm one to two long form per week on YouTube. And I'll just block out time where I've got a subject and, and I'm going to do that. Um, okay. I've got my Get Better Everyday podcast. And so I'm recording one or two of those every week to go out every Friday. and then the team can take a clip or two or three and put that on LinkedIn, put that on um, Instagram and, and, and repurpose it in different places. Because again, like those, those little short form clips are just, people like it. People they're, like, they're, they're probably the most, uh, you know, I found that they're probably the most reusable piece of this whole product. Yeah. I, I, I'm, almost, I'm thankful that TikTok did so well. Now everyone wants to be TikTok. That I, you can repurpose. I mean, for me, it's like I would put the same. Maybe we'll change the subtitles. It's the same video, same clip we can put everywhere. And I don't think that's true for every other, uh, you know, long form piece of content. I'll, I'll yeah. really do that. Uh, and short, and short some, blessing. 
something that you said that nailed it. And I think this is important for people. Um, it's, it's the way I think about it and the way I'm doing it. So everybody can choose to do it however they want. But you're absolutely 100% correct that a short form piece of video is generally speaking, going to track somebody that's a little bit farther out. They're higher up in the funnel. If somebody watches my eight minute video, should I pay points? Like, what do I expect during a real estate transaction? Those people are shopping for homes or they just got into, like they are, they are a lot closer. And so, you know, that was what I loved about the YouTube long form is I would get all these incoming inquiries through greatmortgagebroker.com of people that are like, yeah, I want to get pre-approved. We're, you know, got 60 days notice from our landlord. Like I got to get pre-approved. I got to buy a house right now. If you're creating Instagram stuff or TikTok stuff, you might get someone that's like, oh, that's cool. I want to buy a house someday. They might be three years out. And really I've talked to high level Instagram creators. They're like, Matt, I create a lot, a lot, a lot of inquiries and a lot of engagement, but I've got to have text, email, follow-up, drip campaigns that are 24 months, 36 months long, because these people aren't as close to the finish line as, as the long form stuff. So that's why I think you do both. And I think that the, especially in the real estate space, you want to do both. And another hot take I got from Mark McDonough from the YouTube stuff was that his YouTube lives is where he takes the people that like him and trust him. And if you're thinking about buying a home in the next month or two, you're going to sit on a 30 minute YouTube live and type in like, Oh yeah. How is this neighborhood in Folsom, California? You want to know. And, and so, you know, he's, he's nurturing that creating that relationship and, and building all that rapport through long form and through, through live. And, you know, the proof is in the pudding. The guy's closing a lot of real estate deals. I I, I love that funnel step. I love that that short form can take you to the longer form. And then the most valuable thing people have to give a content creator is their time. They're in the moment live time. Because, you know, anyone can catch a a, a YouTube video when you're commuting, when you're, you know, making dinner, when you, you know what I mean, right? You put it in the corner, put your phone in the corner, put it on play, and you're just listening in the background, right? That's, but, but to give people their live time, that is like the biggest, you know, kudos, the biggest you know, opt-in uh, you can, ask. I haven't thought about it that way. That's the biggest opt-in you can ask for. Give me your time, real time, right now. Not when you want, when I want, right? When you're on live and I'm adding the most value to you because you're you're further down in the process. I love that. That's a great- Yeah, and, 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 think, and think about it as a real estate agent. You know, somebody's asking you about this specific neighborhood near a school. And if they type something into Google- and they get information about like, how competitive is it? How many days on the market? Or, or what's it going to take to get my offer accepted? And they find an article from nine months ago. You think the real estate market's changed in nine months? If they find something from, you know, <laughs> November of 22, is that is that valuable for them? Or live? And you're saying, you know what? Back in May, I was going up against eight offers. I just got a client a $20,000 credit because August 24th, the market's different than it was back in May. That is valuable. I know it and I'm passionate about it when I speak about it. So that's what the end consumer is going to feel as well. 100%. I love that. Appreciate that. Yeah, that, 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 that's a great insight. You know, and, and, and just, just thinking selfishly here, I mean, I got to do more of those. <laughs> I've, got that, I've got people in the front and I got people in that medium part of the funnel. And then I just, I'm relying on the call to action. I'm like, why? Like go in there and answer their questions right out. People that are just much closer to that um, and just add value regardless of it, right? Whoever wants to join, I'm that. so I'm making a note. I'm putting that in the process. You know, my, my team's already running on this. Uh, let's make that happen. Uh, I think it's a great way to add value to those folks. I'm um, right. just taking the next step, take them to the next step and get more people on there. And it's a great way to leverage uh, that knowledge. So Matt, um, you know, this has been a joy. This has been great. You know, it'd been great to talk to. I, I love talking to practitioners, man. People that are passionate about what they're doing, you can tell that you that you like this. You're doing something that you're interested in, that you love. Uh, that's always great to see. So, if someone wants to, Matt, continue the conversation, reach out to you either about content or or mortgage or whatever it is. Um, what is the best way to reach out to you? Uh, best way is probably just ping me on social. You know, you can find me on Instagram, Matt the Mortgage Guy, um, on TikTok, Matt the Mortgage Guy, 
uh, on YouTube, Matt, the mortgage guy. Um, if, if you email me, Matt at mtmg.com, um, I'll get it there too. So um, I, I usually tell, you know, clients and, and real estate agents in the area, like if you Google Matt, the mortgage guy, Matt Gouget mortgage, and you can't find a way to contact me, I'm doing it wrong. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. so trust you, you, you'll, you'll find a way to reach me. And, you know, I'm happy to talk about any of the stuff. Cause like you said, I'm passionate about, I'm having fun. And, you know, when you started talking about the live, those of us that are doing it, truly doing it to help people, the business is going to come and you don't have to worry about it. I'm on my live helping navigate people through a new home purchase with the builder's lender, nothing to do with my business. People hear it, they get value from it, they learn this person is able to, you know, negotiate and save money or, or find, you know, something in that process where they can ask a question they didn't know to ask. They all receive value and trust me, the business will follow, right? Just go out there and serve and help people. And, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about tracking you know, the ROI of doing good in the world because doing good is, is always good, right? And helping people is, is always a winning formula. Yeah, I, I love that. And I love that approach. You know, for me, um, you know, I, I, I come from, a, I come from a family of teachers like that, you know, that like, you know, uh, uh, high school, university. And, you know, so I have the soul of a teacher. That's, you know, my, that's my, kind of my thing. It's my jam, right? So, but, but for me, it, I had not found a way because I used it with my team and, you know, I, I would teach that. I love doing that, but I had not found a way to do it for the audience and, and, and going on camera, doing video, uh, doing long form was the way that I found that. Like, Oh, okay. I can do it this way. Oh, I see. Cause for me, you know, kind of selling myself and making a personal brand wasn't appealing to me. And then maybe it will, will, will resonate with that. You know, me being the face of the company, me being the, the guy and the personal brand, that part doesn't appeal to you. But, but what you just mentioned that, right putting some good out there, helping people, right? Making a connection and adding some value to their lives. That resonated with me. And it made the camera weigh, instead of weighing 10,000 pounds, it, this, was, this is a lot easier to do, to get started, to get started. It was a lot easier, right? So I, I love the way you're, you're spinning that. That is exactly the way people need to think about it. And just put some education out there, help people. And if you do that effectively, I agree with you. I think the business is going to follow that 100%. So I love that. Oh, and I just thought about another really good question. Before I let you go, Matt, before I let you go, what is, okay, I know I'm going to get this later. What is a reason, again, st- let's go back to that scenario of Matt starting again in summer of 2023. What is a reasonable time frame if you're doing this in Northern California, real estate agent, to start seeing some positive movement on your channel? And l- let's be honest with folks. This is not like, pay-per-click or you'll get a lead in 24 hours. This is not that, right? If you want to do that, go to pay-per-click. But if you want to go content, you want to do lead generation through content, how long do people need to do this consistently before even thinking about the lead generation, the business side? How would you answer that question? That That's a great question. And I think that, you know, it's going to depend on the platform, right? And I think YouTube is probably a slower game but but one that's very, very fruitful if you're consistent. You said the word consistent, and no matter which one you pick, you have to be consistent. If you post seven things one month, one thing the month after, 14 one week in month three, and then zero, like you can't do that. And so what I advise people is start with something that's comfortable and do it consistently. For me, on YouTube, it was only one time a week which doesn't sound like a lot, but if you consistently do it for a year, you've got 50 long form videos. Mm -hmm. Then you get better and you tell yourself, I can do two a week. And then the next year you do a hundred. And after three to six months, I think that no matter where it's at, if you do it consistently, you're going to start to see some traction. And the best part is that it doesn't take a lot, especially in the real estate space. Somebody reaches out to you They like you, they trust you, they turn into a client in month three or four. You're like, wow, this works. I'm gonna lean in and do it a little bit more. And then another one comes and then two in one week. And then you've got seven people that reached out and like, you're like, holy moly, you know, in early 2022 and I've got metrics and I've been tracking it, that greatmortgagebroker.com link where it's name, email, Uh... phone, price point, uh, purchase, refinance, um, 
it, like it's it's a long form. People are serious when they fill out the form and I don't trick them. Fill out the form if you want to connect me and my team and talk about it, right? So it's not like I'm going to give you a free e-booklet or, you know, get pre-approved in nine seconds. It's none of that. It's connect me and my team. I was getting like 85 a week, you know, I, upwards of 300 a month with people that are raising their hands and saying, I like and trust this guy. I'd like to get some information from his team. And so no doubt it works, but it's going to take time and effort. And I think that the beauty of it is it's going to have more than just bringing business. You're going to get better, not only in your presenting and your knowledge, but you're going to you're going to be establish yourself as an industry expert. You can share those videos with current clients. You can share those videos with referral partners, with past clients. You know, I've got some videos that are aimed at past clients and they're like, I got a supplemental tax bill. What the heck is that? Oh, here's a video I made. A couple of people asked me, why did I get two supplemental tax bills? Well, you close it during a certain time frame, you're going to get two. So I made a video on that. And so People reach out to me. I'm nurturing my past client database by providing them value too. There's there's so many different things you can do. It's I I am passionate about. It. I love it. Yeah, I love that. Uh, and again, thank you, Matt, uh, for bringing the energy, for bringing the vibes. Uh, you know, people should approach it this way. And if you approach it value first, uh, you know, I I, I think you I think it's going to go differently if if you try to look at it as a, as just a lead generation activity. So, Matt, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, Matt, the mortgage guy here in the group. Matt, hopefully we'll see you later. Maybe when you're killing it on TikTok, we'll have you here <laughs> back again, right? So we can talk about that journey. Um, you're always welcome to come back, Matt. Thank you so much. We will rewind and do it again. I just want one last piece of parting advice. Go for it. Go have for some it. fun doing it, oh, right? Yeah. Go out there and enjoy 100%. yourself. Have 100%. some fun doing it. And that's the thing, do is be yourself. You don't have to be, you know, overly dramatic or fun, but just bring the version of yourself that you are in your everyday life. And to be quite honest, some people are more dry and you're going to have a certain amount of people that resonate with that. Some people have super high energy and you're going to turn off people with that high energy, but attract the ones who want to work with you. So go out there and be yourself and have fun. Um, I think that more people uh, would enjoy it than, than think, right? They'll get started and they'll be like, you know what? This is kind of fun. Maybe I'll keep yeah. doing it. It's hard at that beginning, but once you get over that hump, uh, you, you can find that. I, I agree with you uh, 100%, but you, but you got to start, right? Journey of a thousand steps starts with that first step. And I think we'll need to jump in for it. And yes, you can absolutely have some fun with that, 100%. All right. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you having me, man. Thanks, man. Bye.